Thank you so much. Let me thank, uh, first of all, Professor Ignacio Musso for his invitation. You should know that we are very old friends. He's still a very young man. But we met for the first time 44 years ago. So you can imagine how strong it's our time. And we also thank Professor Stefano Michelli for this invitation. Now, I, I would like to devote my 30 minutes uh, to defend uh, the following thesis. Why, in the epoch of, of globalization, we happen to live now, we need uh, ethics. In other words, I want to demonstrate why there is uh, certain problems in the present day world which, in order to be solved, uh, demand uh, recourse to ethics. And if I have time, the second question is, which type of ethical metrics should we adopt? Because there are at least four different, not one, four different ethical theories or metrics. So there is a problem of choice. For instance, utilitarianism is a, a, a contractualism is a second one. The third one is the ontologist, Kant. The fourth one is the ethic of virtue. So the second question is, which one of the four is best fitted to cope with the problems? Let me start then with the first question. Why do we need the ethics? First of all, let me mention that for us economists, that is a little less than a tragedy. Because we economists, we have been brought up in the last almost three centuries to believe that economics as a science has no need to bother with ethical consideration. That is the famous thesis of neutrality, according to Lionel Robbins, or the thesis of self-reference. I mean, economists do not need to bother with ethical issues. We leave ethical issues to philosophers like Willem and others, because we have our own rules of the game. And now, if my thesis is accepted, that will ruin this uh, uh, habit. Because, and that is why most economists nowadays all over the world are in a deep crisis. Because they are losing a, a sort of a, a fundamental tenet. And when you challenge an economist to take into consideration the ethical dimension, there are problems. First of all, because most economists do not distinguish between utilitarianism and contractualism. For them, there is no difference. I, I'm, I'm not saying all of them. But for a certain, because they have not been accustomed. In our economics faculty, ethics is never been taught. Even nowadays, perhaps here in Venice, I don't know, but in most faculties of economics, of department of economics, ethics is not taught as such and such. So that is why this thesis, if, it, if accepted, will provoke a major, uh, let's say, uh, disarray among the economy. Now, let me come then to defend the thesis. I have three arguments. The first one has to do with what, uh, in a paper a few years ago, the American economist from Harvard, Danny Rodrick, called, Roderick, called uh, the political trilemma. The idea is simply put in the, suppose you use this triangle, and we put on the vertex here increments of globalization, which means uh, increasing uh, the the interchange of capital, goods, of physical goods, finances, etc. Which means expanding the interdependence among countries. Let me put here the defense of national identity. National identity. And let me put here democracy, increasing democracy. Now, the political trailer says the following, that under the present condition it's impossible it's an impossibility theorem, eh? like the Harrow uh, says, say, it's impossible to devise an institutional setup, institutional setup, such that the three values are take or three targets are jointly uh, In other words, it's impossible to organize the economic sphere and the financial sphere in such a way as uh, you increase uh, Globalization, in other words, say interchanges of one type or the other. You maintain national identity, which means cultural, national, local culture, etc., and you increase democracy. We have to choose. Only two of the out of the three can be realized. Now, consider this side of the triangle. 
That is what has been called by Friedman, the fake Thomas Friedman, the American journalist, has been called global uh, federalism. Now, these people, most of them are the United States, they say, we should give up national identity. It's impossible to maintain national identity. So we have to give precedence to globalization, which is unavoidable, and to democracy. Consider this side. That is what has been called, again by Thomas Friedman, New York Times, the golden straight jacket. Golden straight jacket. In other words, the idea is that we have to give up democracy. And that is the approach taken by Chinese. The Chinese government and other countries, they say, it's impossible to have at the same time an increment in the economic interaction and keeping national identity, which is something good, it's a value, and expanding democracy. And we decide, we Chinese, have decided to keep uh, 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 under control democracy. Democracy means uh, liberal democracy, of course. Eh? I use democracy in the sense of Finally, if you consider the third side of the triangle, you have what is called uh, 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 new Bretton Woods. It's uh, the so-called reformist line of those people, most of them are in Europe, in uh, the European Union, who say, we have to keep under control globalization because we cannot give up democracy, because democracy is a supreme value. We cannot give up national identity. We want to keep our cultural diversity. Italy is uh, not the same as France. France is not the same as Germany. And so it's a value to, to attribute a value to uh, uh, cultural diversity. So we have to restrict, not abolish, of course, but to restrict the better the globalization. Now, the point is the following. Which one, how do you choose between the three alternatives? Of course, there are minimal alternatives. You can make a complex combination of the three different uh, approaches. But to simplify, let, let us consider only the three. Tell me, how can you choose? Can you use uh, the economic, uh, economic artillery? Of course not. You cannot use the efficiency argument. Because you can apply efficiency to this target. But you cannot say, well, let us give up uh, democracy because democracy is not efficient. That is ridiculous. And uh, can you approach political theory? Of course not. In other words, when you come to this type of issue and you have to make a choice between the three alternatives, recourse to ethical ethics, it's full. In other words, that is the first case where you have to use ethics or ethical arguments in order to make a choice. Otherwise, neither economics, nor political theory, nor sociology is capable of solving the problem. And by the way, most of our debates in political discourses are due to the fact that most people still believe, still believe that it's possible to reach an agreement on the basis of technicalities. No way, because it's not a matter of technicality. That is what is called a conflict of values. And conflict of values cannot be, it's not like the conflict of interest. You can solve the conflict of interest using the Hedgeworth box diagram, as the economists know, but you cannot solve using both uh, Edgeworth box diagrams the conflict of values.